guys welcome back another ufc fight night october 1st at the ufc apex we got main event with the ladies we got mackenzie dern versus jan Juanan. and let's get into it right away because these two ladies and i always like when the ufc highlights the girls gives them a main event just like shows that the boss is being fair and he's letting his top straw some of his top straw weights get a crack at some main event money so let's get right into it. Mackenzie Dern ranked 5, 12 and 2, favored at a minus 225. She's a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt. She's been three times performance of the night. She has the most submissions in the strawweight division, four, and hopefully, and growing. And she's only the only two losses that she's ever had. She's lost by decision. Her last fight was the win against Torres. And she lost the fight before to Marina Rodriguez. And she beat Amanda Nunes' wife, Nina Nunes. So she's been on a steady, uh, steady, steady solid uh, tear in the UFC in the strawweight division. Who she's fighting is kind of on a two-fight little skid streak. And she lost to also Marina Rodriguez. Like I said, the matchmaker saw both these fighters lost to the same person. So this is why it's really cool. They get to fight each other. Also, Yan is ranked number six. Another fun fact about Yan, she's actually the first female Chinese fighter ever in the UFC. So, got to give her respect to that. That's actually a big thing for their country. So, she's the first and she's getting a main event. Just to show that, you know, hard work can get you a lot of fame and a lot of big fights. So, her last loss was also to Marina Rodriguez. She also fought Esparza, who she lost to. But on the... But she was on a fight, fight, five fight win streak prior to that. She's 15 and three, and she's the underdog at plus 190. But for Notorious Radio, we're gonna rock with Mackenzie Dern for that night. She's the black belt. She was, she's a mother. She had a child. Not a lot of the U UFC female fighters have children. She's had a child. Girl's doing well. Came back and is fighting at the top of the division. So I really, really respect that. And Notorious Radio is rocking with Mackenzie Dern. For a co-main event, we got our local talent, Root Randy, Root Boy Brown, at a heavy minus 305, six foot three welterweight, going against possibly the eldest, most eldest welterweight in the division, and Francisco Trinaldo. He is 44 years old. He is 5'9. But I will tell you, this is a fantastic co-main event. I am stoked. To watch these two guys go at it. This is an amazing fight. We have Randy Brown. 15 and 4. He's on a 3 fight win streak. His last fight against Chaos Williams. If you guys watched it. He had a mean front kick up the middle. Which literally like broke his big toe. He literally in the middle of the fight. We'll put a little clip. He was stepping on his toe. To like fix it so he can continue fighting. And where he won by decision. So was it a dislocated toe? Is that what, what it was? Yeah, it just snapped out of place. The big toe snapped out of place at the, at the joint. The fight before that, he beat Jared Gooden, and he had a submission win against Alex Oliveira. So Randy's on a nice little win streak, and I believe his momentum is going to continue. We also have the 44-year-old Trinaldo, and he's still cracking at it. And he's on a two-fight win streak. He beat Danny Roberts. He had a win against Dwight Grant, but... He had a loss to Muslim Sulaco, and that was by decision. So, Trinaldo has been doing absolutely fantastic. These two guys get the co-main event slot, but you know we're going to rock with our local. We're going to rock with Randy Brown. We're taking Randy Brown at a minus 305. So, this fight is going to be absolute fireworks. These guys deliver every time they show up. So, definitely stay tuned to this co-main event. For our next fight, we got the Bantamweights. We have... Rayoni Barcelos versus Trevin Jones and you might not know these guys well but I'm going to give you a little fun facts about them and you'll understand why these guys are getting to fight each other and why this fight makes sense so Rayoni Barcelos is 16 and 3 he started off in the UFC 5 and 0 he was in a crazy hot streak he's had two losses he lost to T Timur Valeev and Victor Henry but mind you he's a black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and he's already won three fight, of the night, fight night bonuses. So to me, that's huge to win those bonuses. It has to be very exciting. 
they don't, they don't just get given out for fun. And his opponent, Trevin Jones, who's 13-8, and eight, is on a two-fight losing streak, but he has lost to absolute killers. His last loss was to Javed Bashrat, who's on a crazy tear, and his, whose brother just got a UFC contract on the Dana White Contender Series. So two brothers, both Bantamweights, both looking to tear up the UFC's Bantamweight division. Super exciting. And the fight before that, he lost to Saeed Yakubo, and he had a win. Versus Mario Batusta, but he had a crazy no contest where he actually TKO'd Timur Valea, but they turned it into a no contest because he came up for weed. The dude lost the fight. He actually won because he tested positive for weed. That's fucking insane. Not steroids, not EPO, fucking weed. He smoked, they caught him, and they took away his TKO. So. That's fucking crazy. I thought they stopped doing that shit. I see mad fighters right now smoking. Nate Diaz, Rodriguez, Mike Perry. Like, so many people are, like, smoking weed. They're trainers. I think it's ridiculous. They should have that overturn. That should be a W for him. But, obviously, the commission is fucked up. They obviously won't go back. And for our next fight, which you guys are going to find a little crazy... But we have Sadiq Yusuf, number 12 ranked featherweight. And the guy he's fighting, you guys probably have no idea what it is. But let's just go over the line so you can understand. So we have Sadiq Yusuf, 12 and 2, who's a favorite, minus 1200. Like, fucking Khazmat Chimaev wasn't even a minus 1200 going against this fight. Versus the guy who's making his literally his UFC debut in Don Shiannis, who's the underdog at plus 630. And it's his UFC debut. But he's on a five fight win streak outside of the UFC, but that doesn't mean shit to me. Because, like, this is a completely different game. This is a top 15 opponent who was just supposed to fight Giga Chikazde September 17th. Do you understand the level that the UFC is willing to put him up against? And. This is this guy's debut. This, to me, is like a slaughter of a lamb. Like, I just, you know, or maybe good payday or crazy degenerate luck. You know, because in the fight business, obviously one punch, anyone can go. So, everyone has a puncher's chance. I truly believe that. No one is unbeatable. It's the fight game. Let's be honest. But I cannot put my money on someone who's making their UFC debut Versus a guy who was about to fight a top 10, Giga Chikaze, who's on a crazy tear in the featherweight division, making his first comeback fight, speedy recovery to Giga, but against a guy in his UFC debut. So either the matchmakers see something or understand something that I don't, but to me, this is a slaughter, and we're going to rock with Sodik Yusuf. But like I said, it's this guy's UFC debut, and if you're feeling like lucky, and you think it'll be his lucky day, he's at a heavy plus 630. So keep that in mind. Going forward, we have a catch weight fight with this guy, John Castaneda versus Daniel Santos. And we're going to go into it. 19 and 5, John Castaneda versus 10 and 2, Daniel Santos. And Castaneda had a nice win over Miles Johns and over Eddie Wyland. And Daniel Santos' UFC debut, he lost to Julio Arce, who's also a New York local, fights at a Tiger Showman's. So, this is a good fight, and not much to understand. They're fighting at a catchweight. I think these guys are both sluggers. I, John Castaneda is coming at the favorite, at minus 190, but... I like what I saw when he fought Julio Arce. Even though he lost, he did lose by decision. And I think he's really game. So we're going to rock with the underdog. And we're going to take Daniel Santos at plus 160. So keep an eye on that catchweight bout between these two. I have a feeling we're going to have a, one of our upsets of the night. For the next fight, like I said, is our guy Mike Davis who's a Dana White Contender Series alumni. He actually lost to Sodik Yusuf and worked his way back 
into the UFC by having wins in all their promotions. And his first fight, actually, when he got his UFC debut, was against Gilbert Burns at welterweight, which he lost. So he picked up a nice little two-fight win streak versus Gifford, and he had a really nice win over Mason Jones. But he's going against another Dana White contender series alumni, guy who's coming up, who had a really nice win. Dana White contender series debut on Chris Ducan with a crazy left hook. Crazy story about this kid, Chris Ducan. He came back and had a crazy knockout over Charlie Campbell, which was nuts. So, just to show you, you can lose and still make in the Dana White's contender series and come back. Like, this shit is crazy. Like, I remember when I watched Blachislaw beat Chris Ducan, and now Chris Ducan has got a UFC contract because he came back with some crazy momentum and had a win. At the main event. At the Dana White Contender Series. So. We're going to rock with our guy Mike Davis though. He's a beast boy. That's his nickname. And we're going to believe he's going to clean up the Russian at lightweight. This fight is at a perfect division for Mike Davis. Obviously going against Gilbert Burns. At Walter Waite was never going to be successful. And coming down to lightweight. He's really fighting at a more natural weight class for him. And the division. So this should be really exciting. Keep an eye out. We're rocking with Mike Davis at a minus 200. We have Vyacheslav Borshev at a plus 154. So definitely keep an eye on that. Both Dana White Contender Series graduates or attendees or been a part of it. So really cool. Keep an eye on it. And I also want to highlight the main event of the prelims. We have two crazy, crazy veterans. We have Iller Latifi. 16 and 8, who used to be a very fun, crazy Greco Roman wrestler at light heavyweight. But I guess he doesn't want to make the cut and he's made his way up to the heavyweight division. He had a loss to Derek Lewis and he had a win with Tanner Bosser. But he's going against the oldest UFC fighter. So it's crazy. Trinaldo, who's 44 years old. And now we have Alexei Alinik, the boa constrictor, who's 44 years old. Record of 60 and 16. Like, this is insane. This guy has fought everybody. He's so durable. Like, even with his, some of his bad losses, he comes back. Just the way he competes at this high level at his age, it's absolutely inc incredible. He had a beautiful finish against Jared Vendera. But he was on a three-fight losing streak prior to that. He lost to Spivak, he lost to Chris Dacus, and he lost to Derek Lewis. So both the gentlemen lost to Derek Lewis. Like I said, the matchmakers is like, all right, you guys got to settle the score. For something in my heart is telling me it's possibly it can be the Boa Constrictor's final fight if it doesn't go his way. I do believe he is the more crafty grappler, and he will submit Air Latifi. Latifi will... Try to take him to the ground, uses Greco-Roman wrestling and ground and pound, and that's exactly the territory the Boa Constrictor wants to be. He wants to take you to the ground, he wants to trick you, he wants to submit you, put you to sleep. He's very crafty. We're going to be rocking with Olenek at a plus 150. We have Air Latifi at a minus 175. Guys, this fight, remember, is on Saturday, October 1st at the UFC Apex, 7 p.m. main event, Mackenzie Dern versus Jan. And I love being with you guys and talking to you guys. And our next really, really big UFC pay-per-view that's coming up is, obviously, you know, is Islam Makachev versus the champion Charles Oliveira in Abu Dhabi, October 22nd. So we are really gearing up for that. And remember, like, follow, subscribe us on all platforms. And follow Notorious Radio 718. And remember, if it ain't Notorious, I don't want it. Can't wait to see you soon. I'm looking forward to it. Peace and love.